Okay, I'm I'm actually recording two videos back to back because I have so much to say. Um, I've been I have been uh, wanting to talk about uh, a friend, and um, I've been putting it off. Uh, but I I have gotten her permission, and she wants the story shared. Um, she just wants her privacy respected, and um, I'm going to talk about it again. I'm going to talk about. Um, divorce and remarriage. Okay, so um, you know, in the Bible it says that um, if we love our brother or sister, we're supposed to go to them and tell them if they are living in some kind of sin. We're supposed to gently correct them. Those who are wise, who are spiritual, are supposed to gently correct them. And if they repent, you forgive them it's great so if they've sinned against you you're supposed to go to them and tell them how they've sinned against you or if you see them living in some sin you're supposed to um, go to them and correct them okay now uh, in these days that's called church discipline in these days it's it's extremely rare for someone to do what the Bible says I'm talking about Matthew 18 and 1 Corinthians 5. Um, but I have, I've had it, uh, I've <laughs> had a church call me in for church discipline um, because they wanted to, they are a church that wants to do church discipline and my husband was asking for them to do church discipline against me and so um, you know, I went in because I said, okay, I wasn't a member of the church, but I said, if you've got something to tell me to discipline me, then go ahead. And basically, um, the elders, I met with two of the elders and they were saying, we don't see anything wrong uh, that, you know, you know, we're sorry that your husband came to us and asked for you to be disciplined. Uh, but we don't see anything wrong or why you couldn't be a member of our church or whatever. And, um, you know, that basically I wasn't living in sexual immorality. I mean, that's the amazing thing. What do they call it? The psychological term is projection. If you say this about uh, someone, it most likely is that you are the one who's guilty. So, um, you know, the good thing is that my husband knows what the Bible has to say, but the bad thing is he wanted to use the Bible against me but I was found basically. It's like going to it's like going to court within the church. Um, but I was found not guilty. Okay. So um, so in January, um, a friend of mine, um, God told me, <laughs> this is not fun. God told me to go tell her that I thought that she was living in adultery because I had um, been friends with her for a couple of years and did not realize that she was married to a divorced man so as I was talking with her about it um, she had been married for a long time um, a long time and she has a teenager and I was like wow I know you hear from God um, maybe this is just something new that you need to be asking from him about repenting and uh, and I said but God has told me that this is wrong and and I, I can't just say oh I'm gonna make a special case for this particular friend and believe me y'all I've got a lot of friends uh, or had a lot of friends who would not who turned out to not be real friends because um, they don't like what I say in that I say you're married for life for better for worse rich or poor sickness and health until death do you part and that God has listened to those vows and yes you can it's not the unforgivable sin you can get divorced if you're in an abused situation but your goal then is to pray for them and find reconciliation that's what the Bible says 
It's not, it's not for you to go get another spouse. And the, Jesus was very clear that even the innocent spouse, I mean, if anybody could have gotten remarried, it would be me. I was the innocent spouse. Fought being divorced for four years. Um, but, you know, in a no-fault divorce, you can't do anything about it. So anyway, I was asking her, I said, listen, I feel in my gut that um, this is something you need to deal with, with the Lord about. Um, yes, I know you've been born again. Yes, I know that you um, have dreams and visions and all of that. But I want you to be counted worthy. And God has laid this on my heart that I want you to really ask him, because I'm not the judge. I want you to ask him if you're living in remarriage adultery, where you are the adulteress because you've married a divorced man. And I know... I got a lot of people already mad right here. But if you'll just hang with me for a second. Please hang with me for a second. This woman took it seriously. And she started seeking God. And God, I mean, it was about three weeks, four weeks, where I said, I'm so sorry. I can talk to you on the phone. I can go to church with you. Uh, but I really, I, I, I need you to be spending, if I'm not... If you're just going to brush this off, then I can't be friends with you. But if you really are going to seek God and let Him tell you and give you the true answer, then um, I can still, you know, talk to you and fellowship with you. But if you're going to be um, hard-hearted about this or say that there's no way that God is telling you uh, to repent of this, then, uh, you know... It's been, our, our friendship has been for a season, I guess, is what I said. Our friendship has been for a season. But thank God she took it seriously. She loves Jesus. She wants to be making it in the rapture. And so uh, about three or four weeks where she got hit with a terrible, terrible backache. She was calling me, and I was like, I'm praying for your back, and, you know, it could be kidney stones and all that. She's like, no. It was probably the stress that, you know, her muscles were just so tight, the stress of having to consider this, because she doesn't want to hurt her her um, son, right? And, um, and so... I guess, I guess on like the fourth Sunday that I saw her, um, she told me that she was about 80% sure that um, she was in adultery, that she was the adulteress who had married a divorced man, and that, you know, long, I mean, she's not been a Christian that long. She said, you know, when I married him, there was something about it that didn't seem right, but, you know, everybody does it. And so I, I ignored my conscience is really what she did. She ignored her conscience. And so I said, listen, um, I'm going to help you find out if this truly is God's will. Because, you know, in Matthew 7, it says, only those who obey the will of God will enter heaven. It's very serious. And I said, so since God told me to correct you, and now you think you're 80, 80, I think she said 80 or 90% sure that you're living in adultery. Um, let me help you find a, a Christian divorce attorney. And when we go and meet, if it turns out that we're wrong about this, God's going to correct us. He's just, he's, it could be it's just a test, right? Could be it's just a test. So uh, we go. Uh, it turned out the first. Um, divorce attorney, Christian divorce attorney that I knew um, met with her but did not have time to take on the case the, and still we were getting a yes, it's, it's, it's a go, it's, it, you should get out of this you should divorce this divorced man so that you are not living in remarriage adultery and um, also I think during that time she did watch my uh, playlist of divorce and remarriage adultery so anyway, so the second attorney we go to see, and she says, um, and it was a Christian attorney, 
and um, she told him that this is what she was doing and he didn't agree that that's the reason to get divorced right but he's also uh, in the divorce business which you know how do you be a Christian and be in the divorce business I don't know but well I mean you know he 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 wants to help abused women I guess it's really what it is he he takes on uh, abused women to get them out of abuse situations and to get them divorced which is fine I know I know a lot I know a lot of abused women who get divorced they and they stay single they're incredible women they serve the Lord with all their heart and they're out there helping other abused women right I guess which is why I was wanting to do it because I was trying to help um, this abused woman because it's not been a good marriage she's been abused and she felt like she was supposed to stay because it says that if you become a believer you're supposed to stay the same as you were called okay so if you become a believer when you're in a marriage you're supposed to stay married and if the unbeliever will live with you you're supposed to live with them and you're supposed to show them the grace and love of Jesus Christ so she didn't want to leave but this thing about being married to a divorced man was where she sought God okay so we went and we went to the and we filed for divorce and still we did not get anything from God saying no no this is wrong you shouldn't be doing this and uh, that night when she got into bed she had a confirmation from God that she was doing the right thing and it's I've asked her you know I've asked her like are you telling people about this and she says no I really uh, I don't want people to think I'm crazy I've told my son uh, about it and my son is in agreement that I shouldn't be married to his dad who's a divorced man that's pretty amazing isn't it um, the the son uh, so she hasn't gone public with this yet because the the divorce is still in progress okay but she strongly believes that it's true that she was in remarriage adultery because she had a visitation from God and she said it was a cloud that came down she was in her bedroom in, in the bed and you know how God speaks to us most often in the bed like when we first wake up or during the middle of the night uh, and she said she had a vision this cloud came down and enveloped her body and she felt um, peace and the she's had it before where she felt like the living waters going up and through her body I call them Holy Spirit tingles uh, for me they don't feel like water they feel like tingles that go up and down my body from the Holy Spirit but she felt like it was waters going up and down her body and then she heard a loud voice a loud male voice I believe she heard the voice of God I have heard that loud male voice but in her case she couldn't understand what he was saying and um, but she knew that she was doing the right thing and she's not um, she's actually gone and talked to other Christian women in uh, that she knows who are in remarriages she's actually doing this she feels so strongly by having that confirmation of God by having that um, that him speaking to her spirit in words that she didn't understand um, she has a calling on her life now to tell other women to get out of being married um, to a divorced person and uh, so I'm I know a lot of y'all really hate for me to talk about divorce and remarriage but um, I have to talk about it you know I have to talk about it God speaks to me you know to, uh, in my earlier video when I said um, you were made to be courageous I've got to be courageous that even if it turns out every single person unsubscribes and my name is it's not my name it's God's name walking by the spirits always if that channel name is blasted all over you know that I'm being judgmental I I can't 
I can't be responsible for that. I've got to be responsible to my judge who's going to judge me for every idle word I've spoken. He's going to judge me for how I have taught the word. His, I mean, it is a humbling thing to think that if I led anybody to get left behind, it is so humbling if I led anybody to stay stuck in their sin and not to examine themselves, to work out their salvation with fear and trembling. Um, I work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. So, I'm, I, I have to say though too, I have been really encouraged by um, how many, when I go to these, um, when I go on to other channels that don't teach the truth about divorce and remarriage, and people are like, well, I'm a special case, and I'm a special case, and I'm a special case. And all I can think of is, uh, it says in the Bible, beware of people who excuse these sins. Beware of people who excuse these sins. And in the book of Proverbs, it says, you know, run from adultery. It will destroy your life. So um, the great thing is, when I'm putting comments in other people, trying to point them to um, other ministries that um, that have testimonies of people who've gotten out of divorce and remarriage adultery, um, when I point to these things, I get to see amazing stories of, um, you know, uh, Huntley 100. They have a bunch of stories of people who were divorced and got back together again and got restored. Um, I've been adding them to my playlist. Um, I, I see a woman who's she's on her fourth marriage, and she said, "Wow, thank you so much for." And I'm just not even. She's not watched me. She's just read my comment, and she says, "Wow, you know, I looked at those Bible verses, and um, basically the Bible verses are um, Romans seven one through three." You'll be called an adulteress if you marry while your husband is still alive. Called. I'm not labeling you. God is labeling you. God would be labeling me if I remarried while my husband is still alive. I don't want to be an adulteress. First Corinthians 7, 11. If you get divorced, remain single or else be reconciled to your husband. Husbands, don't divorce your wives. Period. There's no trade-in to get a new model. <laughs> Love your wives, Jesus said. Love your wives. Love your wives and children. Be willing to die for them. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 7.39 says that same thing. A woman will be called an adulteress if she is married to someone while her husband is still alive. And then says, um, you know, also, I mean, just you got to read 1 Corinthians 7. But I'm amazed. I look at these people and they pick out one verse. And they'll pick out that verse. Well, if the unbeliever leaves, then I'm free to remarry. Read it closely, folks. If the unbeliever leaves, you're not free to remarry. You're, you're still married in God's eyes. God does not honor divorce. You're still married. God wants you to love on that person, pray for that person, do whatever is possible to get that person saved. Even be willing to die for them if that would get them into the kingdom, right? Um, then we've got Mark 10, Luke 16, Matthew 19, uh, and Matthew chapter 5. And Matthew chapter, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, it's not fair. It's not fair that I can, you know, I've gotten married and, and uh, you know, maybe I've been married a couple of times. It's not fair that now I can't get married again. You know, this this is just not worth it. It's, you know, uh, when I was talking to my sister Fairy about it, I was like, you know, some of these people, they can read the same scriptures that you and I read and... Um, and I mean, I got, I've got a sister named Connie. Is she understands? Uh, I've got, I've got a sister named Sandy. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a sister named Diane. I've got a lot of sisters that are in my same situation, who, 
go, well, yeah, it's not fair. It's not fair that my husband left me and he's married someone else. It's not fair. It's not fair, uh, you know, that, yeah, my husband cheated on me and I can't um, get remarried. It's not fair. God is not fair. But as Barry says, like, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it. Um, I mean, some, I, and I have to say, I'll, let me, I'll, I'll tell you something else, too. Um, a lot of my sisters of color, my black sisters, okay, I think these are some of the most amazing women. And I'm telling you what, I love how, I don't know if it's because, um, I don't know what it is. They seem to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit than a lot of us uh, white women. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, but some of my very best uh, sisters in Christ are black. Okay, and they understand this, right? And they're raising their children as single moms, and they're teaching their children morality. And when they have messed up by, um, well, like I'm thinking of, uh, of one who, she did the cheating, right? And so her husband said, I, I'm leaving, you did the cheating. And she's not like, well, Okay, I'm forgiven of my adultery. I can I can get remarried. She's like, no, I am like the woman who is forgiven of adultery to go and sin no more. And she's teaching her children morality. And um, you know, and I, I see them. I'll see them in the comments saying, I'm single for life. I am single for life. Well, hopefully Jesus is coming back soon. But if not you know marriage <laughs> a lot of people think oh paul was such a wacko right but paul said you know if you do get married make sure it's in the lord and only in the lord and guess what you're going to have troubles because you're married so so i'll just so i go to the hospital uh, let me <laughs> i got so much to say so i go to the hospital and um i see I see, I, I love these people, and I, I truly, truly wish that every single person that I see, that, that I had an opportunity to tell them the gospel, but I, I'm not allowed to, right? Uh, all I can do is pray for them. Um, and so it can be really sad sometimes going to the hospital and seeing, um, seeing people that are suffering in their illnesses and um, and they just don't know they just don't, they're not suffering because of Christ they're suffering because they're still sinners and um, it breaks my heart it really does it breaks my heart that I can you know and and I've got when I walk into a room and uh, you know like today I walk into a room and this uh, young woman very young probably 22 uh, I'm not talking with her I'm talking with the guy and the guy is so proud that this is his third baby and he's probably only about 22 and he's like um, he's a baby maker he goes around and makes babies with women that are not his wife okay now that is so offensive to me right but I got to put on a happy face and just pretend but it's so grievous it's so grievous that these sweet people young people that are they just don't understand which um, I said I was gonna do a video about the church okay but it's the church the church doesn't understand this um, the church wants to be so culturally relevant to go oh yeah grace grace you know grace abounds and um, they want to have numbers and they want to have money and they want to have programs and they're not willing to get in there and get dirty not dirty like dirty and sin get down into the muck of trying to save a soul save a soul that is 
going to, that is diseased with sin. Somewhere in the Bible it says, if you have no concern for the lost, you're not really saved yourself. Okay? So, um, God is good to me that as I'm seeing the different people that are lost, and as I'm driving down there, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, any day now, destruction is coming. 9 9-11, any day now, destruction is coming. And But I've got to go in there and put on a happy face with my happy dog, right? Um, but I'm grieving. I'm grieving inside for the lost. And I did meet... Um, I did meet... Uh, a, a born again a couple of black women that are born again Christians that I can you know I, I can tell I can tell I can tell I can tell my spirit agrees with their spirit and we don't have to talk about God I know I can see the Holy Spirit coming out of them and um, so then I, I'm driving home and I'm still like I'm just looking at the sea of cars and thinking about you know one day Truly, there will just be a few out of the sea of cars. There will be just a few that get raptured. And, oh, Lord, how I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, how I want to be in that number. Um, and then I go to uh, Sam's, which is also, I mean, a lot of times I get witnessing opportunities in Sam's. And so I go and I'm talking to a woman and yeah, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm talking to the woman and uh, this is how God speaks to me. I said something, I had Lexi with me because it's hot. So I take Lexi into Sam's and she sang, I said, oh, um, I, she was, uh, she worked for Sam's. I said, I hope it's okay for me to bring my dog in because, um, you know, it's hot in the car. And she said, oh yeah, sure. It's fine for you to bring your car, your dog in. And I said, um, yeah, I, I normally would have taken her home, but, you know, with the traffic and everything, and I've just been to the hospital to visit the pregnant women. Now, this is how God speaks to me. And I said something about, you know, some of these women, they're really struggling to keep their pregnancies. And like one of them today, and I'm talking to a black woman, uh, a, young, a young black woman. I thought she was in her 20s. She ended up telling me she was 31. Um, but I'm saying, you know, um, I said, I, I said, one of these women, uh, I, I said, I love her and um, she is struggling to keep the baby because she has a short cervix. Okay, guys, I know y'all are grossed out about this, but um, it's not like all that common. Now, why did God tell me to say about this particular woman having a short cervix? As soon as I said that, the woman that I'm talking to, which I didn't catch her name, she goes, oh my goodness, I had a short cervix. And I was like, oh really? And I said, are you a Christian? And she said, yes, I am. I said, isn't that funny? God told me to say, to talk about, I mean, I saw six or seven patients, but he wanted me to say something about that one, the short cervix. And she started telling me about how she has a one-year-old and that she had a short cervix and they kept saying listen you're gonna have to go on bed rest which is what happens to these women that have to go to the hospital um, and I would say I run into the short cervix thing probably about once a month okay out of all the patients that I see about once a month anyway so God tells me to say something about the short cervix this woman had a short cervix she's telling me yeah I worked for Sam's they told me you're gonna have to go on bed rest or you're gonna have to work sitting in the um, robo uh, <laughs> the robo wheelchair right so she said I that's what I did I stayed in the um, the wheelchair working my job she worked behind the cash register and uh, I was able to carry the baby until the week before it the baby was due which is really amazing and she said yeah it was a miracle and I said you know um, you know does God speak to you? you know, does God speak to you? Because a lot of times people say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, right? I'm a Christian. And I said, you know, does God speak to you? And she said, oh yes, he speaks to me all the time. And I said, I said, oh, can you tell me an example? She said, well, my mother passed, so the baby is one year old now. And she said, my mother um, 
God told me my mother was going to die. And it was about, uh, it, I, I forget how, it was while she was pregnant. And she said, uh, and hi there if you're watching. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. Um, she said, God told me that my mother was going to die. And she had a stroke and she died about two weeks after God told me that she was going to die. That's the gift of prophecy, okay? And, um, and she said, but God had prepared me for it since he told me ahead of time. And then she said, um, and then, so this was, I, I, think the, I think her mother died three weeks before the baby was due. I think that's right. And um, so then she had her baby. And normally that would have been a very high stress thing. But she said, I just had this total peace because God told me what was going to happen. I knew my mother was a believer. My mother was going to heaven. And, um, and so then I'm telling her, hey, you know, we may be going to heaven soon. And you're going to be up there with your baby and your mother and all that. And she, she was not rapture aware. Excuse me. But she says God tells her stuff all the time. She says, yes, I have dreams. I have visions. And I said, okay, so listen, what I'm telling you is that go onto YouTube and, and look at, at what's happening. You know, you, you know your Bible. She said, oh, yes, I read my Bible. So she said, yeah, I know. And she said, ah, she didn't, I mean, she knew about the wars and rumors of wars and the um, earthquakes and the volcanoes and all. But she did not have the missing piece which we have, which is that Israel has been a nation for 70 years. She did not know that missing piece. And when I told her about that missing piece, then she was interested in like, it actually could be happening. And I said, so then what you do is when you go to bed, you ask God to give you a dream to confirm if what I have told you is correct. If we are in those last days where the rapture is going to be happening, where you can then go tell other people your age, you know, tell other uh, people your age. Okay, so back to the divorce and remarriage thing. I said to her something about how, um, you know, uh, I didn't talk to her about my divorce. I didn't talk to her about me. I talked to her about, you know, I see these pregnant women who are having babies out of wedlock, and it's like it's no big deal. And I see these women that are on that have been divorced and remarried who are having babies when their husband is still alive and they're um, they're just they're just so clueless. And she said, Oh no. She said, No, absolutely not. Because I was thinking maybe she was gonna say, Yeah, you know, that's my culture, that's what we do. Uh, and I'm not trying to be racist about it, but it the the statistics about how many uh, uh, black women have babies out of wedlock is high. It's very high. I want to say it's seventy something percent. So anyway, um, she said no. He was my high school sweetheart. I think they started dating at seventeen, and we waited until we got married. And then um, we did not get pregnant for, I, 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 I want to say, six or seven years. And she said, so I didn't get pregnant until I was 30. I'm 31 now. The baby's one year old. But she said, I know, I know that um, the culture is very immoral. But my mother was a good Christian woman who taught me, and my, her mom and dad, she actually was raised by two, she said both of my parents were born again believers okay so this is the conduct of a born again believer and this is the testimony of a born again believer and then what we have learned and what we have repented of and we have victory over we are supposed to tell others and so she was um, in fact we ended up sort of getting a line behind us uh, because she was really wanting to know about this because she doesn't have, you know, her mother's gone now. So uh, she didn't know the possibility of getting to go see her mom soon in heaven. So she was very excited about it and not fearful about it at all. So um, I wish I knew her name. But I'm, for, if anybody, if any of this makes any sense to you, ask God to convict you of uh, any sin that you're still in so that you can be a wise virgin and not a foolish virgin 
And do you know you can even reclaim your virginity, right? If you have had sexual sin, um, you can reclaim your virginity by confessing that you lost your virginity and go and sin no more. So we're not talking about marriage there. We're talking about where you fornicated, right? So if you fornicated, you can be forgiven of fornication. You just stop doing it by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is powerful, powerful. You can walk away from the old you and walk into newness to where you are no longer a sinner headed over the cliff or headed into the destruction but you are walking, turning around, away from your sin, and getting clean, and putting on your pretty wedding dress, and your wedding dress to Jesus, and staying clean, staying out of the mud, okay? And I tried to find, I can't find it. I don't know where it is, but I'll end it, because I said I was gonna talk about the church, but I did have that dream where I was standing in a church it was an outside church with a sea of people. So I'm like in a mega church outside under, you know, the heavens. And a little bit of rain starts to fall. And I pull out my red umbrella, the blood of Jesus, which, yes, the blood of Jesus covers us. But it doesn't keep covering us to keep on staying dirty underneath the umbrella, okay? We don't want to keep our robes, we keep, we're supposed to keep our robes clean, okay? So I pull out my red umbrella and I can see a flood coming. Maybe that's what, you know, maybe that's why this morning I was um, sad. I see the flood coming and the church, all like zombies, turned and walked into the flood and I was, I was like, no! No, no, don't go. Repent, repent. Turn back to Jesus. Come back. And like zombies, they all went and walked into the flood. Down, 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 and they drowned. So, I don't know where, if I ever shared that dream, I don't know if that means that 9-11 is coming and we are about to face the destruction. Um... You know, if I die today, I hope that uh, I served God well by talking again about this subject. Um, if it saves one person, you know, like the woman who's been married four times and she says, I got it. She said, oh my goodness, I got it. And then I started crying and crying. And then I went to my, my husband who I loved and I said, I can't do this anymore. I have to get out of this. I can't have sex with you ever again. I, I, she got it. She got it. And if it's just that one woman who got it, or my friend who I did the hard thing and told her, you know, you might hate me and you might not want me as a friend anymore. If anybody I can get saved, I want, to the, I want people to get saved. And if yes, if I've got to be hated, ridiculed, I'm a broken record, You want somebody wants to come over and kill me? I just don't. I just I just know that when I face my judge, I want to know that I lived for Jesus and I loved people to the point that I'm willing to be hated and killed. Okay, because I haven't been on the mission field to a closed country where I could lose my life for having my Bible. I'm just a nothing just a nothing there are people throughout the ages who have truly given up their lives for Jesus may we all be counted worthy God bless you I love you bye bye